he does. Which leaves your main event for the AEW World Championship. <sighs> Match was okay. I thought it was a bit flat. Um, I love Christian Cage. Adore Christian Cage. Canadian main event, let's go, baby. It was very evident that this was meant to be Hangman Page's spot. And they've made that very clear. And I think Christian did an admirable job. And they did some good spots. Um, they relied quite a bit on outside shenanigans, I thought. That's fine. Uh, Kenny Omega gets the win. Okay. It feels like an afterthought because it is. I thought Christian did a great job. I don't think he'll be around this anymore. And to be honest, Christian's, what, 47, 48? And I'm sure if you asked him, hey, buddy, or, you know, I know he's in his mid-40s minimum. Hey, buddy, you came back from a career in an injury, and here you are, and everything that goes with it. He'd be like, do you know what? I'm having fun, and I'm in Pat World Champion, and I'm doing great things, and I'm helping out companies, and I'm making good, good money. And I'm a father, and I'm a happy man, and I love you so much, Christian. Congratulations, mate. You fucking deserve all of this. That being yeah, said, I thought, the, I thought the match was a bit flat. I don't like Kenny Omega, but I don't have the vitriolic, vitriolic excuse me, hatred that I do for the Young Bucks with him. Um, I just think he's too over, over. Again, he's another guy who, do you know what? He was amazing in New Japan. And I feel Absolutely. like he's, and his run in North America, I think, has been tainted by two things. First of all, he's clearly become very egotistical about his own self. And he's started believing his own hype too much. And that is a recipe for disaster, regardless of how good you are. Unless you're Michael Jordan or Tom Brady. And by the way, Tom Brady is one of the most humble people on earth. And he's a seven-time Super Bowl champion and still the pinnacle of the fucking sporting world. And he's nowhere near as arrogant as this little gobshite. And people are like, oh, it's just a character. Yeah, but you can tell. Come on. There's no reason for him to be champion this long. There's no reason for him to be champion over other people. Um, and not to mention, he's had some real fucking stinkers in that time. And who can forget that fucking, what was that? A spark the fest they had. Uh, fuck Barbed me. wire exploding death match. What a sack of horse shit. An embarrassment to the business. Wow, we, we have changed, though, I'll tell you. So the match is fine. Kenny Omega retains. I and... broke uh, One Winged Angel, my might add, just to make Christian look pretty strong. Because yeah, yeah. Like, the and... One Winged Angel is the most protected finisher ever. The finishes the were all excellent for the most part. Yeah. I thought they were excellent. They were so well booked and they maintained good strength for the opponents while putting over the people that needed to be put over. But let's talk about it. Uh, the elite are bragging in the ring and talking about, oh, it's time for me to do what I do best, which is send everyone home. And I said to you, didn't I? There's one man coming and he'll be coming in and interrupt. And it wasn't him. It was Adam Cole. No and... one, uh, no one alive or, or sorry. What was it? They've already, I've already beaten them. They're tired or they're dead. And you as soon what? as he said dead, I'm like, okay, I'm ready. And then it happened. I will talk about it more on a separate video we're going to record after this and will be released uh, for later on today, which is Monday. Um, Monday, you know, so late, 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 late Sunday night, early Monday. Um, this feels like that Lex Luger moment in WCW. How long ago did we see Adam Cole wrestling Kyle O'Reilly to take over? Um, a week ago. We did. Fuck me. I think takeover was last weekend. I think it was. Or it might have been two weeks. Two weeks, two weeks, yeah. But that's yeah. that's not it's a long cool. time when you go watch two roars. Holy shit. Um mind blowing. Two weeks ago, and here he is. He's got the shirt, he's got the sexy music, he looks sexy. That music was incredible. It was very still undisputed era-esque, like 80s cheesy porn. Yeah, but it perfect. But and it suits him so well. He slides in the ring and he squares off of the elite, and you think, here we go. And then he just turns heel immediately. And joins the jungle boy in the face. And you got about a minute to di to really digest that. And then I think it's Riley the Valkyrie's place. The, the, the third audible scream for our from our gracious host today. Probably, yeah, probably my highest <laughs> scream. And there is actually video evidence of that. And if anyone wants to see it, let us know and I'll post that just for shits and giggles. Um, I'll just put it on our Twitter or something. Danny Bryan comes out and I freaked out because for me, Danny Bryan is the pinnacle of what wrestling is in this modern era, along with Adam Cole. These, Adam Cole and Danny Bryan, in my opinion, probably my two favorite wrestlers of the last 15 years. So, you know, holy shit balls. 
And it, the thing is, I knew they were coming. I even said to you, didn't I, after Taker, it just felt like this was the end of Adam Cole in WWE. And it, it was a yeah. somber moment, you know, because I love NXT and I'm always going to love NXT. And by the way, you know, newsflash, in case you haven't noticed, you can, you can enjoy both. What? No, you can't. You will pick a side and be tribal. Um, I've always thought NXT was the best show, but I feel like AEW is overtaking. And I think this is the biggest step they've ever taken to doing so. And again, that's what this video later on is going to be about. But Adam Cole and Daniel Bryan, and then Daniel Bryan aligns himself with the faces and they clean house and the knee plus. And <sighs> yeah, you can't. You can't handle it all. You're like, it's Adam fucking Cole. And he's Adam Cole, baby. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm marking the fuck out. And then here comes Daniel Bryan like three minutes later. Can you, was... you imagine if if that fucking first Nitro, what the hell is Lex Luger doing here? And then immediately Scott Hall came rampaging. <laughs> and you were like, ah! It's like, there, there was so much to digest in about a five-minute span. I was giddy as fuck. But, oh, well, we forgot to mention the end of the world title match. Uh, the elite start beating down Christian. Lucha Express comes out. They start beating them down. And when when Daniel Bryan's coming down, like you see all the heels standing in the ring. You see you see Gals and Anderson give Marco Stunt a magic killer, but no one acknowledges it. It was the funniest thing in the world the to me. The least moment of the night. Because nobody... nobody gave a shit, but I saw it. But then Bryan Danielson comes out, you know, right of the Valkyries, and I love Dana. I love Dana Bryan, Bryan Danielson, call him what you will. And we're going to get Daniel Bryan and Kenny Omega because that's, that's just what's going to happen. And I've never been so excited for a Bryan Danielson match in my fucking life because we might not be the biggest Kenny fans, but that doesn't take away the fact that he's an incredible in-ring worker. Always has been. It's just his character, especially at AEW, is shit. It, it just is. He's boring. He's, this is not, by the way, this is not the cleaner. That's the other big problem here. He's not the fucking cleaner. And that's what pisses me off because that's why everyone's like, oh my God, we're going to get the cleaner. The cleaner was fucking great. Where is the cleaner? I want. I don't want hokey pokey. Hey, 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 I'm Kenny Omega. Did I do that? Shut up. What is this nerdy bullshit? You just look like a fucking gay comic book character. And there's nothing wrong with that, but... You know, like, for instance, somebody said to me, oh, I love Kenny Omega because he's bisexual. What does that have to do with anything? It doesn't. I'm sorry. I know this might offend the woke environment, but, you know, being bisexual is not a premise or a, a preface or a prelude, should I say, to being talented. Doesn't mean anything. Kenny Omega is an amazing talent because of when he's Kenny Omega, when he's the cleaner. This goofy shit is a massive step down. It feels like he's trying to be a sports entertainer, dare I say. Ooh. That's what it feels like. More wrestling, please, Kenny Omega, and less fucking tap dancing bullshit. Because I actually think Kenny Omega is so much better than he is right now. I think he could be so much better. Uh, and we saw a little glimpse of it with John Moxley, and then they just went <laughs> and just tailed off because he had to be goofy and him and his friends. And you know what? Stop being like the Young Bucks. That's not a good thing, mate. You can be so much better than that. Well, he's um, not going to have a choice but to wrestle when he's got Brian Daniels at the American Dragon. Let's fucking go, we'll man. get the best match. This will be, that is a match. I assume it will be a full gear. I think we might get CM Punk versus Adam Cole. Not here. Oh, oh. Um, suit you, sir. I really want a backstage moment where um, Britt Baker's cut the promo and Adam Cole walks by. She's like, yo. I don't know who you are, but get out of my shop. Like, I just think it'd be really funny. And he's just like, chill out, bitch. <laughs> just walks past. Like, it'd just be like, oh, better still, she's like, yo, that dude's got a really nice ass. <laughs> like, I just think that'd be really funny. <laughs> do something like that. It'd be really jokes. Um, you know they're going to do something stupid where they're like, they're going to try and explain how Adam Cole's still alive because people watch being the elite, which I think is stupid. I've never watched an episode. It's dumb and I hate it. I don't have time for the frat boy stupid humor. No, Sorry. which is... I'm a little worried that Adam Cole is going to get lost in this. That's what worries me. I don't want him in the elite. I think no. Adam Cole is too big a star to be in the elite. Especially and now. Yeah, yeah. And at the NXT run, if anything, right, you, if the AEW fans want to say, ha, you're beloved NXT, ha, ha, it's like, well, we'll say what you like, but NXT helped legitimize him as a main event star. Um, and what you see now from Adam Cole and AEW, that will have certainly helped 
build those blocks. And by shitting on that, what you're essentially saying is fuck people like Carlo Rani. So you go ahead and say that to their face and see how that works out for you. But I, I am concerned. And I immediately was like looking at my phone thinking, oh, this is amazing and this is a big deal. But why did you have to put him immediately in the elite like that? You know, and everyone's like, oh my God, they're kissing each cheek. Nobody watches that. Only a, a couple of hundred thousand people at the most get that. Everyone else is like, why are the young guys kissing him on the cheeks? Because they used to do it in the, the Bullet Club and it was cute. And I, I liked it as well. But it was small time. This is the big time now. It's time to act like an adult. It's time to play with the big boys. Um, and the young bucks are small boys. Kenny Omega is acting like a small boy when he can be a big boy. And I just don't think the elite is a good position for Adam Cole. But your final thoughts on the fact that we have Adam Cole and Daniel Bryan in AEW now bolstering what is already looking like an incredibly scary and powerful alternative at the very least. This is the biggest coup since like 1996 from WWF to WCW. Like this is... This is going to bring, like, I don't care about ratings. Directions neither of us do. is what it's going to bring. Well, I mean, go through the camera stops at my tits because we'd get banned on YouTube right now. On oh, my tits, what? But I don't care about ratings. You know, neither of us do. But this know. Wednesday's Dynamite is going to be massive. And Rampage well, reckon, probably as well. I reckon. Uh, this two. I'm going to say at least two. Uh, yeah, this definitely breaches one and a half. I think this, I think it's I'm going to say two. It's a matter of time before they start running over Raw, I think. And yep. then we're going to have to... It's very intriguing. Like I say, we're going to talk about the whole WWE dynamic a little bit later because I don't think WWE is worth talking about right now. But um, it's, it's huge. It's a huge deal. There's not really much else I can add to that. It's a big fucking deal. What would you give this pay-per-view out of 10? Nine and a half. Yeah. I, yeah. It wasn't you know perfect. Half is... QT Marsha. <laughs> there, oh, there, was, there was a few, you know, a few things that we did mention that worked. By the way, Kenny from... Omega put, pulling. By the way, AEW has an incredible record for botches. And the fact that they only had one serious botch and it was Kenny Omega is <laughs> jokes to me. And people are going to say you shouldn't celebrate botches. Uh, trust me, I've botched in front of an audience. I know how shitty that can be, but come on, mate. Of all the people, the illustrious Kenny Omega, who's apparently the best world champion ever, according to all their fans, and here he is slipping on his ass and then looking like a goober. And then he tries to play it off and realizes he's looking like an even bigger twat for doing that, <laughs> and he should have just got on with it. Yeah, I thought that was very funny. But um, nine and a half is very, very fair. Yeah. If this show gets Jinder Mahal, it is game over. I, I saw people equating this show to WrestleMania X7. Let's not get ridiculous. No. no. It was good. It was great even. But, I mean, if you're on a scale of 1 to 10, X7 is like a 12, a 15. X7 so. sold over a million pay-per-view buys. The first of its kind to ever do that. And I believe the only one to ever do that. Um, and it also pulled like 1.7 million in merch alone. You know, on the day in the stadium. They, yeah. you know, let's not get ridiculous. And it was also a different time. But what AEW did tonight was masterful. It was magical. It was like, special. Like I've just said, fucking incredible. And I don't hate AEW. I'm going to keep reiterating this until people fucking listen. I do not hate AEW. I have critiques and criticisms of what their content is and what I personally would like to see. And just because I necessarily don't like something or I want to see something specific doesn't necessarily mean that I think, oh, fuck AEW entirely. No, that's actually not the case. Like, good for it is subjective. And there is, stuff, like, for instance, you know, I wanted a more serious Miro and we've got him now. And I think he's tenfold better than that best man crap. And you can't tell me he's not. But I understand some people like the goofy shit and they like the funny shit, you know. I guess it's harder for me because I'm in a lot of pain a lot of the time because my body and wrestling and mentally I'm, you know, really struggling sometimes and wrestling really hurts. And I take wrestling very seriously because I put so much into it. 
you know, what you don't see is the guy who goes to independent shows and records them and then painstakingly sits there and edits all the angles together for, let's be frank, very little money that other people are charging hundreds and hundreds of pounds or dollars for. You know, I'm the guy who then goes to training two or three times a week while going to the gym four or five times a week while dealing with all the, you know, the body paranoia and things that come with being a large guy and stuff like that. So I don't like the ridiculously goofy shit because I know how fucking hard it is just to break in anywhere, even in, in front of 50 people and what sacrifices I had to make just to do that. So I'm just appealing to your better sense of judgment, ladies and gentlemen, saying, you know, that's why it hurts for me when I see the goober shit from the Young Bucks stuff like that. So I just think, man, I go through so much. I'm not saying they don't. What I'm saying is it's hard for me to enjoy the over-the-top bullshit when I've had to, you know, suffer so much just for a tiny little glimpse of the business that I love more than anything else in the world. Um, it was amazing. It was fantastic. 